Well, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Happy Sabbath. I'm so glad to be able to, to be here to join um, and to see what's going on here in Flagstaff. Yeah. I've actually been attending Northern Arizona University, which is right down the street, uh, the last year and a half, finishing up my pre-med. And so it's exciting to, to see what's going on in the backyard here. And I'm excited. I'm praying for a specific faculty, co-workers, because I used to work there, uh, um, doing some research on the side, and some classmates of mine. And so I'm sending them some pictures of what we're doing and uh, I'm going to encourage them to come on out to the event. So I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Amen. God is gracious. And I am just so happy as one of the literature ministry director, seeing so much literature go out in our, in our backyard. Uh, but number two, this book is uh, such a blessing. I don't have time to go into my personal testimony in grand detail, but when I was converting from atheism to Christianity, you could imagine I had a lot of questions, a lot of objections, a lot of challenges to work through. And I remember I studied Daniel with just the right person who went to the right, gave me this book, The Great Controversy. Uh, I read this book cover to cover in a couple weeks. It's doable. It's doable. Trust me. And it answered all of my lingering questions that I had. Amen. And it, 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 by the time I was done with this book, I had no more objections with Christianity. Uh, it, it really helped me to see um, the, the harmony of scripture and especially how it brought out objections throughout the passages and it would harmonize them with scripture and give the most logical answer I've ever heard. See, I used to debate Christians in high school. I used to argue to pull Christians out of the church and this book just like, I couldn't win. You know, I just I couldn't win this debate. And so um, it, it not only is it amazing to see um, literature, inspired literature going out in the community, it's particularly this book, especially. I'm ex excited to see it going out. So I'm going to pray. Then I have a little devotional thought I'd like to share with you this evening. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again just for the privilege that we can be here on this Sabbath to worship you, uh, to rejoice in your glory, to just dwell upon the impact, Lord, of this outreach. And I already know that it's in the hands of people that are responding. And we pray earnestly at this very moment that heaven would be silent tonight, Lord, Amen. because it's empty. Fill Flagstaff with your holy messengers. Amen. Convict minds, convict hearts from Amen. students to faculty to residents, just to, to the different people that have already received the package. Yes. I ask that tonight that they would be compelled to open it up and begin to read it. I know this is your desire. So, Lord, again, just grace us with your presence. Guide us as we look at some scriptures. Enlighten our minds and bless the community. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, please take your Bibles with me. It opens to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I was given a time limit, so I'm going to put my phone right here. There we go. I know I've already used about five of those uh, minutes that were given to me approximately. So we're going to Romans 10. And I just want to look at a simple passage this evening. Verse 13. Romans 10, beginning in verse 13. Give you a moment to, uh, to turn your Bibles there or to get the phones there. All right. The Bible says here in Romans 10, verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved Amen. now that's just a beautiful verse period because god made salvation so easy did he not see humans we have a fun tendency to overcomplicate everything in life right yeah yeah like like choosing what school you go to we overcomplicate it right choosing your employment we overcomplicate it like we overcomplicate a lot of things in life and even sadly salvation i think we can overcomplicate salvation as human beings we have that tendency but paul here in in simple terms says look 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 look, look. fundamentally if you call on god's name you can be saved wow. and it's like he's making it plain that god wants salvation to be easy but now follow his thought process. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So he, he, he begins this, this line of thought. Well, it actually precedes before this. But at this point, we're picking up 
with this idea that salvation is simple. You just, if you can call in the name of the Lord, you can be saved. But how can you do that unless you actually believe in the person that you're calling upon? So something has to happen before you can call, right? You have to come to a point where you believe or it can be translated have faith, right? This idea, this belief or faith. And so this like this faith in Christ, those that have faith in Christ can call on him and be saved. But the person has to believe first. Now follow his thought process. He continues here. And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? Salvation is simple. Call, you can be saved. But how can you call unless you believe? But how can you believe unless you heard? Mm. Are you following his thought process here? Like he, Paul's going somewhere important here. He then says, and how will they hear without a preacher? Mm. Like, I mean, Paul's just being so simple here. It's like, you know, it's like anyone who calls can be saved. We're all, amen. But you can't call unless you believe. You can't believe unless you heard. And you can't hear unless someone tells you. And then he takes it a step further. And how shall they preach, verse 15, unless they are sent? In other words, if no one is sent, if no one goes forth to share, then they cannot hear. And if they cannot hear, they cannot believe. And if they cannot believe, they cannot call. And if there's no call, there's no salvation. And Paul ends by quoting this text as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring good news of good things. Amen. Amen. In other words, Paul Sayer saying, this is why the feet of those that actually go forth are so precious. They're be- you know you have beautiful feet? Amen. 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 In the eyes of heaven, y'all got beautiful feet. I don't care what your toes look like tonight. Amen. Amen. Like, in the eyes of heaven, you have beautiful feet. Why? Because Paul here is saying, look, it is just, it's, 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 just, it's an idiomatic expression. It's just, he's saying it's so precious. It's so valuable. It's so beautiful that someone is actually willing to go. Because that chain of events can now occur in the lives of people. That without that initial reaction of going forth nothing else could take place that follows are you following paul's logic here this is why what you're doing is so exciting to me how many thousands i want you to really think about this i mean i I was talking to someone earlier i said how many books did you went out today he said well i think in our van i think they said 1400 or 1600 or something like that i was like four one thousand 400 great controversies from one vehicle today. Another vehicle had about a thousand. That means between two vehicles, I know by looking at the size of the group, I know more than two vehicles went out. Amen. (laughs) That means between two vehicles, about 2,000 minimum great controversies went into the hands of someone today. Now, if that doesn't excite you as a Christian, I don't think anything will. (laughs) And angels are now drawing near to those people to compel them because now they have a chance to, they have a chance to hear. And see, the the sad thing about literature, I love literature evangelism. I've been involved with literature evangelism pretty much full time since 2009. Is it's one of the most least immediate gratifying ministries you could be part of. (laughs) You go to the door, you sell a book, or you give a book, and you almost virtually never see that person again the rest of your life. I can't tell you how many thousands of, just in Arizona this summer, we had 200,000 books through the Youth Rush program go out, $200,000 worth of books. It's amazing. Most of those people I'll probably never see again. And so it's one of the least instant gratifying ministries. Like, I'm also a public evangelist, which is one of the most gratifying ministries to be part of, because you preach. 
they make a decision and then I, you baptize them. <laughs> it's like, like you're kind of there to, I enjoy the fruit of my cold porters. I'll put it that way. <laughs> they do all the groundwork and I come in and clean house, you know, and it's just, it's a beautiful experience and I love it. I want to share a story with you. I was in Northern California. This is 2000, I believe it was 2011, no, 2010. Went with a student. She called in person. She's sharing books, having a challenge sharing the books. I showed up to help her, answered the person's question. Person was uh, non-denominational. Uh, wife was an ex-Adventist. Um, they didn't like Adventists. And here we are, two Adventist co-porters. We told them plainly, we're Seventh-day Adventist Christians sharing these books. And we answered some questions. And in a moment of him looking at a text for the first time with new insight, I, I saw this moment of, of, of a glisten of opening. I closed them on the books. He said, yes, we put the books in his hands. He gave us a donation and we skedaddled, right? <laughs> and so he got a set of books, about five books. Fast forward a couple to about two years later, that student is now my leader. We're working in the same general area. We were supposed to sleep at one church, but because uh, a, a water leak happened, they told us when we showed up, you can't sleep here. So we lateraled to a local Spanish church and just slept on the kitchen floor in the Spanish church. We made it work, you know? And I was like, okay, Lord, we're here for a reason. Whatever it is, you're going to bless us in this new church, new area, whatever. It's going to happen. It's okay. That, that Sabbath, uh, the next day was Sabbath. We went to church. And I get a tap on the shoulder and a church member says, hey, you know, someone wants to talk to you. Now, when you're in charge of a group of young people sleeping in a church and they say someone wants to talk to you, you're usually in trouble. That's just how it works. You're usually in trouble. So you start like bracing yourself, like, Lord, give me the patience of the saints. Give me like a loving spirit. Help me to like, like seek to understand. No, anyways, I go to talk to the guy. And the first thing he says to me is, do you remember me? Mm. I looked at him and said, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I have a horrible memory <laughs> as it is, but my job requires me to meet literally hundreds of people. I said, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember you. He said, that's okay. He said, I, I know you go door to door. And I was like, what? Who is this guy? You know? He said, but I remember you. He said, two years ago, you and a young lady came to my door. And he recounted to me the story of the one I just mentioned. He called his wife over, and then I remembered them. Wow. And I was like, I remember you guys. I was like, you didn't like Adventists very much. <laughs> he was like, that's true. He said, after you guys left, I said, what happened? He said, after you guys left, I thought to myself, why did I get these books? Wow. Like, what was I thinking? Like, I don't like these books, but because he's got a mind of good stewardship, he's like, I can't throw them away because I just bought these books. You know, I just spent like 50 bucks on these books. So I put them on the bookshelf. About a year and a half later, he was sitting there and a DVD called uh, Final Events About Prophecy was one of the DVDs we sold, caught his attention. He watched it, was convicted. He didn't understand prophecy. Saw the book, Great Controversy, that he had bought. Pulled that from the shelf, read that book, and was like extremely convicted at this point. Pulled everything off the shelf. Read the last of the three books that he had remaining. And then he decided, I need to find a local Seventh-day Adventist church. Hallelujah. Found the church that we're staying at. Asked the pastor for Bible studies. The week before we arrived, him and his wife were baptized. Amen. So I call over my leader at that because she was there and I was like, this is the student. And we're just, we just had this moment like they're crying. We're crying. They opened up their Bible. They still had the receipt with our names on it. They carried it with them everywhere they went. And they, they said, we remember the prayer that you prayed with us. You wow. remember that you said wow. at the very end of the prayer, if we don't see them again here, we pray that you help us to see them at the tree of life. Wow. And they said that we remember that prayer. And often we have prayed for you guys, Lord, keep them faithful so we can meet them at the tree of life. We can't wait for heaven to thank them for what they did for us. Mind you, we have no conception. We just sold, we left some books and we moved on with life. And we had no conception on what was happening in this particular home. And here we are, and they're just in tears. We're in tears. And then the wife says something most precious. She said, the Lord was so gracious, he gave me a taste of heaven on earth. Wow. Wow. And I remember I thought about this. Wow. I said, how many other people receive books with similar experiences? I have no conception of what happened. Wow. Like, I have no conception of what happened. I have no conception what the end result was. I have no conception of the lives changed, the lives impacted. Like, like, and these people end up planning churches. They became church planners for the church. 
I mean, like their like their impact. They they've impacted their their conference, their community more than anything else. And it was because they got some books from a couple of kids going door to door. You cannot know and cannot measure faithful effort. Amen. It's not possible. And I think of the thousands of books that went out today. You may never know what happens until you get to the to heaven, to the sea of glass. But can you imagine getting the tap on the shoulder? It's like, hey, hey, hey. See that star in your crown? That has my name on it. Amen. You don't remember me, but when you were going around Flagstaff, you left the thing on my door. <laughs> I opened it, and now I'm here today. Amen. Again, you cannot know and cannot. Man. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And it's not just a precious work as I finish. It's a present work. Mm-hmm. We are told some quotes for you that I want to read real quick. Pull these up here. If you take your Bibles, go to Revelation 18 real quick. I'm not going to preach on the whole chapter. I promise. I promise. I teach Revelation at Souls West, but I'm going to restrain myself. Refrain myself. If you've never studied Revelation, I really encourage you. The, day, the days that we live in, this is a book that we as a people really need to understand. Man. We really should be comfortable with the book of Revelation. And I would challenge you if you haven't, and don't be afraid of it. It's a book all about Jesus. It's just following your high priest through the sanctuary. I promise you. It's a precious book. But in chapter 18, verse 1, it tells us what takes place right before Christ returns, right before Jesus comes back. An event is going to take place. And it says here in Revelation 18, verse 1, after this, the plagues, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory this idea that before christ returns to this earth to take us to be with him forever the earth will be filled with his glory this will take place this glory is a manifestation of his character of his goodness a revelation of what the world needed two thousand years ago a god of love this fills the earth but how you ever thought about that Publishing Ministry, page 50, paragraph 2. Never read this quote. I'm challenging you to look at it tonight before you go to sleep. Publishing Ministry, page 50, paragraph 2. Spirit of Prophecy says, And in a large degree, through our publishing houses, is to be accomplished the work of that other angel who comes down from heaven with great power and who lightens the earth with his glory. Quoting Revelation 18, verse 1. In a large degree, that's going to be accomplished through the printed word. That's a powerful thought. You know, someone asked me, how does that make any sense? I said, it's simple. When you sow so much seed all over the world, all over North America, when the rain begins to pour, plants begin to grow. Amen. It's that simple. Amen. You like this man, he, these books sat on his shelf for a year and a half. Never touched it, never looked at it, never thought about it. And one day, his mind was pricked to open it up. Some of these books, these great contracts that were passed out, may sit on the shelf for two, three, five, ten years. Who knows? But it puts a seed in the home. So when the rain finally begins to pour, God has something to work with. Amen. And a plant can grow. You're not just doing a precious work. You're actually doing a prophetic work by being here. You're helping to fulfill what was given in the spirit prophecy in the book of Revelation and disseminating that which will make a manifestation of the character of God so Christ can come to claim us as his own. I would only hope that this would inspire more, more of the church to do more of this. Amen. Amen. Praise God for Streams of Light Ministries and their desire Amen. to get a book in the home of everyone in North America. Yeah. Amen. That is an ambitious project. They need prayers. Amen. 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 But I want, you, I, I want you to know, I'm thankful. But more importantly, I believe heaven is thankful. Mm-hmm. Angels are rejoicing tonight. Amen. I believe people's personal angels are rejoicing tonight. Amen. Someone's angel is in their home right now saying, about time. Amen. I've been needing something to work with. I'm serious, man. I'm serious. When a Christian finally was willing to sit down and talk with me, I'm sure my guardian angel said, about time. This guy, man, he's right. There's so many people that are ripe. Amen? Amen. Ready. I'm going to close with this story. 
week and a half ago or so, we had a, 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 an event, a holiday that people call a holiday in America, uh, known as Halloween. Halloween. And um, we should know it as Christians as Reformation. But um, my brother, he has two, da two daughters and a son. So my nieces and my nephew were out trick-or-treating and they're going door to door doing their thing. And uh, it's been precious, you know, watching my brother through life. He's grown a lot. He's overcome a lot of addictions and things in the past. He's really done well in, in the secular perspective, done well. And I praise God. And there's always been these little glistens of light and hope um, for a walk with God. So we had a conversation last time I was there and I left. So Halloween comes, he's out trick-or-treating and he texts me. He's like, he's like, Hey, he's like, are you, are your people out here tonight? I was like, what's, what's he talking about? He's like, are you guys out here? Are you in town? He's in California. Right. So I was like, no, I'm not in town. I'm in Arizona. He's like, let me show you something. So he FaceTimes me. He's like, we're out here trick-or-treating. And for some reason we keep getting these little things. He pulls out glow tracks. Amen. <laughs> Pulls out a bunch of glow tracks. He got like an assortment of glow tracks. He says these random people come up to us and going, trick or truth. And they're like, huh? He's like, he's like, this ain't candy. He started looking at the pamphlets and he recognized. He's like, wait, I know these pamphlets. My brother carries these pamphlets, you know? It's like, I know these. I've seen these pamphlets before. So he hit me up. He's like, are you here? And I said, like, no, I'm not there. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, you know, he's like, I, I have been thinking about our last conversation and Maybe this is God's way of telling me he has a special treat in store for me tonight. Maybe I should read these. Amen. A few uh, days later, we're talking again. He says, hey, you know, me and my wife are actually open to Bible studies. Um, do you know anyone in the area who would like to study with us? Um, the Bible worker just cut, made, made contact last night. And I'm really thankful. Like stuff's happening right there. But what was it? What was that catalyst that took it to that next level? Literally something called glow in the dark. If you've never done glow in the dark at your local yeah. church, you got to do it. Amen. Get a bunch of glow together. Get a bunch of people on Halloween. Just go all over the place where all the trick-or-treaters are and give out a bunch of glow tracks. Say trick-or-truth and give it out. Trust me. It's the best day to go door to door. Everyone expects you to come. Amen. Amen. Yes. Best day to go. So if you've never done it, please do it. But again, it just reminded me. Literature is powerful. I can give all the arguments I can possibly think of, but it was a simple go track that took my brother to the next level. Amen. What does God have in store for the community? I don't know. But I know it's something big. Amen. It's going to reach people. It's going to be powerful. But what does he have in store for us? Amen. Have we read the great controversy? Yeah. Do we know the truths that it teaches? Amen. Have we spent time daily with Jesus and the word of God? Amen daily understanding the very message that we want to preach to the world yeah. like is it a part of us yeah. like is it not something that we just know but is it something that we truly love yeah. because i will tell you the saddest thing my friends we'll see thousands of people in heaven through your instrumentality but you not to join them inside mm. so i'm thankful we're here to reach those outside but let's look out for one another here as well Amen. Amen. let's encourage one another Amen. have a walk with the lord Amen. Get to know him personally. Let the message be a part of your life. Yes. For then it will have a great power when you share it with others. Is that your desire, amen? amen. Yeah. Father in heaven, I thank you for the chance just to share some thoughts with my friends. I ask, Lord, that your spirit would be with us. We're so grateful. We're so pumped. We're so excited to be able to make a difference in the community. To see the word of the Lord spread throughout the community. To see this book, The Great Conscience, go into the homes. And we pray it would lead people to the scriptures. We pray we lead people to open their Bibles and ask the difficult questions. So to think maybe some, to some people for the first time about these, these wonderful truths and to look at the world with new eyes and to see that we do truly live in strange and unusual times. And I pray through it all that they would find the bright and morning star, Jesus Amen. himself. But Lord, be with every one of us here as well. I pray that this wouldn't just be an event that we're excited and pumped to be part of but that this would really be just an expression of our daily lives, Amen. that we would have a personal walk with you, that we spend time with you in the word every day, that we would learn what it means to have a genuine, true, heartfelt relationship with you and your son, Jesus Christ. And that this kind of outreach would just become a part of just who we are because we can't help but share Jesus with someone else. So I pray earnestly, Lord, help us tonight as we go to bed to commune with you, to commune with our own hearts, to search our hearts, to re-surrender ourselves to you, to recommit our lives to you, Lord. 
and then to go out tomorrow with great power in your spirit and to win others to the kingdom. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.